Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem named factorials and powers of 2 taken from today's code forces round. So as the problem name suggests, it's all about factorials and powers of 2, which is a math topic. However, it is actually a bit masks and a complete search or a bit masks, uh, bit, bit masks root force problem in disguise. So in this problem, we are basically giving powerful numbers as defined as the powers of two or factorials. That's why all the powerful numbers are either factorials or powers of two. And the list of powerful numbers for small um, factorials and powers of two would be one factorial, which is one, two factorial, which is two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24, five factorial is uh, 120, uh, 6 factorial is 720 and so on and these are basically the powerful uh, factorials uh, the list of some of them initial ones and the list of powers of 2 which are powerful numbers would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 so you can see that the powers of 2 are obviously much smaller than the factorials and you can see that the first two elements uh, match and um, this is something which you should keep in mind as you go about thinking about this problem. So in this problem, we are basically given a positive integer n and we need to find out the minimum number of k such that n can be represented as the sum of k distinct powerful numbers or we have to say that there is no such k or if, there, if it is not possible to represent n as the sum of k distinct powerful numbers. So the first observation is that you need to consider the numbers in binary representation if you want to work with the powerful numbers which are powers of 2 and the second observation is that the powerful numbers which are factorials are actually very big and you you if you compute the value of 11 factorial for example or like uh, I think 11 factorial is a bit small if you compute 17 factorial and if you divide it by 10 power of 12 for example you will get that 17 factorial is almost 300 times the largest value of n which is there that's why 17 factorial itself is pretty large and um, 16 factorial is also bigger so essentially we just need to um, consider only the first 16 factorial numbers if we are uh, representing it as a sum of uh, sum of um, the first 16 distinct uh, factorials however if we are representing them as the sum of the base two numbers then we need to consider the binary representation so this is a key thing which you should have noticed from the problem statement itself and in this problem they have actually asked us to merge these two together because the powerful numbers are either the factorials or the powers of two if they asked only for powers of two we would just check for the binary representation and we would check the number of set bits in the binary representation so if you consider a simpler problem where the asters find out the value of k, then k is the number of uh, set bits in the binary representation. And if the asters for for uh, the the example where for the case where they only give us uh, factorials, then in that case we can just do brute force over all uh, factorials, over all sets of factorials. So in this case, um, we'll just brute force over all subsets of factorials if the problem asked us um, only for factorials as powerful numbers and the reason why the brute force for factorials will work is because we know that from the calculator 16 factorial is greater than 10 power of 12 and that's why if you brute force over all subsets which are 2 raised to 16 um, this is a very small number it's only 65,000 and if you consider 100 test cases it's only 65,000 into 100, which will you know, easily fit in three seconds. And that's why um, this is the correct idea. Uh, in case the asked is only about factorials, we can just brute force over all 2 raised to 16 subsets of factorials. And over here, we can use bit masks to make it simple. Um, or you can use a recursive brute, but I'll use bit masks um, in the code for the final uh, logic also. So now the task which is left is merging these two brute force methods together uh, before that first let's realize that k will never be minus one uh, then uh, there will always be a way to represent n as the sum of distinct powerful numbers because we can always represent n 
in binary representation and we can always print the number of set bits in n that's why k will be less than or equal to the number of set bits in n and it will never be minus 1 that's something which you should have noticed immediately and um, so that basically rules out the border case when k is minus 1 it will never be minus 1 now let's try to find out a way in which we can brute force and we which we can combine the ideas for the sum of the factorials and for the sum of the set bits in the binary representation so the key idea is that let's iterate over all uh, uh, also another thing to remember is that when we are considering the sub when we are considering the set bits and when we are considering the factorials none of the factorials and the set bits will ever be equal to each other there will there is no there is no um, x comma y belonging to integers such that um, x factorial is equal to 2 raised to y such that uh, the factorial of x is equal to 2 raised to y except for uh, x is equal to x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So this is the key idea which is also which we are also going to use which is that uh, since we are only considering distinct powerful numbers there will never be a case when the numbers are not distinct except for the first two numbers. So what I'm basically trying to say is that the first two numbers are overlapping in the both the factorials and the binary uh, and, and the powers of 2. However, for any larger factorial, they will never match any uh, binary number and they, they will never match a power of 2. And that is one key idea which you need to keep in mind as you saw the problem statement and as you analyzed the powers and the factorials of 2. So, because of that, we can first iterate over all subsets. So, we are using the first idea which is iterating over all subsets of factorials of the first 16 factorials in fact we iterate over all these subsets and what we do is uh, we use them in a bit mask so mask represents the current subset um, where uh, mask goes from where mask can be any number uh, between 0 and 2 raised to 16 minus 1 so this is the uh, this is the bit mask and we are iterating 2 raised to 16 times and um, in this bit mask if so some um, you should know about bit masks to understand the solution but essentially what we are doing is if mask has the ith bit set if this condition is met this means that i plus 1 factorial is in the mask is in the mask and uh, this basically means that there are 16 bits in the mask the bits are numbered from um, 0 to 15 and um, they are basically like this if you consider the bit mask 14 15 and the 0th bit actually corresponds to 1 factorial uh, the first bit corresponds to 2 factorial the second bit corresponds to 3 factorial and so on all the way up till 14 factorial and 15 15 i mean 15 factorial and 16 factorial so that's why um, if you consider 2 raised to 16 minus 1 then that will have 15 uh, have, will, that will have 16 bits with the last bit being the 15th bit and the 15th bit corresponds to the 16 factorial number and in general if mask and one left shifted i is true then i plus one factorial is in the mask otherwise i plus one factorial is not in the mask and this basically means that i plus one factorial is not in the subset of the first 16 factorials which we have chosen so that's something to know about bit masks now let's try to understand the second part of the thing which is the number of set bits so we know that we can sum up all the we can sum up all the numbers in the subsets so let's see we have a value which represents the sum so the sum is initialized to 0 and every time this condition is met we will increase sum by i plus 1 factorial every time we realize that i the ith set bit is there, the ith bit is set, where i goes from 0 to 15. If that is met, then we know that the answer, the sum of all the factorials will increase by i plus 1 factorial. And now we know that the remaining sum 
the remaining sum, the remaining number to be formed, remaining number uh, to be formed is equal to the value of n minus the sum. And this is because sum represents the sum of the factorial which are used and the remaining number will basically be, we will basically use, we will use uh, the powers of 2. So for the remaining number, we will use powers of 2 to form the remaining number. And that's why this is what we will do. So we just need to check uh, the, we just need to check whether the remaining number can be represented as sums of powers of 2. And that is true because any number can be represented as sums of distinct powers of 2. And that's why this condition will be met in most of the cases. The only cases where the condition will not be met is if one factorial is there in the mask and one factorial is a set bit in the remaining number. In that case, uh, the condition will be false and we cannot represent it as a sum of distinct powers of, uh, of uh, two and of factorials. So in that case, we'll continue. Or uh, another possible discrepancy is if the mask has the first bit set and the remaining number also has the first bit set. If both of these conditions are met, then we know that 2 is present in both the factorials and the powers of 2 and that's why we will ignore that case. So if, if this remaining number and 1 left shifted 0 or if this remaining number and 1 is equal to 2 if this condition is met and the condition that um, that the mask and one left shifted uh, and, and one, if both of these conditions are met, then we know that we are using a duplicate or uh, we are basically duplicating one, duplicating one, uh, I mean duplicating one factorial in both the cases, in both factorials and powers. And that's why we will continue. If this condition is met or if remaining and 1 left shifted 1, 1 left shifted 1 is basically 2. So if remaining and 2 uh, is there and uh, the mask is also has that bit set, if both of these, if either of these conditions are met, so in the second condition we are duplicating 2 factorial in both. So if we are duplicating 2 factorial in both or if we are duplicating 1 factorial in both, then we know that there is a problem and we will continue. Uh, we'll continue and we'll go to the next, we'll go to the next bit mask in the brute force. So if either of these two conditions are met, uh, then we know that there's some duplicate which is happening and we will basically, um, we'll basically use uh, the next uh, bit mask and that's why uh, both of these conditions should be false. So if either of these are true, then we will continue. And uh, now the key idea is that uh, what is the number of uh, uh, what is the number of what is the value of k? What is the final answer? What is the number of powerful numbers which are used in this method? So the key idea is that the number of powerful numbers will be equal to so let's store a variable count which represents the number of powerful numbers. So for each set bit in mask, we will increase the count by one. And for each set bit in the remaining number, we'll increase count by one. So basically, the value of k in this case is equal to the number of set bits in mask plus number of set bits in remaining number because number of set bits in mask represent the factorials which we have chosen and the number of set bits in rem remaining number represent the powers of 2 and that's why this value of k will be the current value of k and we will take the min of k across all the values so we will take the min of all of these for all the bit masks where the bit masks go from 0 to 2 to the power of 16 minus 1 and now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea so in the code for each test case I pre-compute the factorials which is important and I'll use a long long because of the factorials can be of the order 10 power of 12 so pre-compute the factorials and use long long 
then for each test case, I'll take in the long, long n. However, the answer is in because there can be at most 12 plus 12, which is 24. I mean, yeah, or there can be at most like um, to the power of like, it, it can be like 50 plus 50, which is 100. So uh, the integer values will definitely not exceed the limit of 10 power of 9 because 2 to the power of 10 power of 9 will be just way too large. It's more likely that uh, it's 2 to the power of 20 or 30 or 40 or something. That's why int is used for the final answer. And then we are basically brute forcing for all the bit masks. So even mask is int and um, it stores the subsets subset of factorials taken and um, we store this in mask. So we will uh, initialize the sum to be 0 and the count to be 0. So for each set bit, uh, each set bit in mask implies uh, that one i plus 1 factorial is included. So we will increase the sum by factorial of i plus 1 and we will increase the count by 1. Actually, you don't need this count variable because you can just use a built-in built um, pop count method. So I'll show that um, when we reach that part in the code. But for now, just understand that sum represents the sum of all the factorials taken, sum of all the factorials taken in the subset of the first 16 factorials. And we do this uh, to compute that sum of factorials. Then the remaining number is given by n minus sum. So this remaining number should obviously be greater than or equal to 0. And basically, we need to ensure that uh, that rem should not have its zeroth bit set if one factorial was added, and it should not have its first bit set if two factorial was added. So basically, both mask and rem should not have their first bit, uh, should not have their zeroth bit or their first bit set. And this basically means that the uh, one raised to one or left shifted zero or one left shifted one should not be set. And if this is met, we will. If this is not met, then we'll continue. If this is met, then we will uh, minimize the answer, which is the final value of k. We'll minimize the answer to be the minimum of the previous value of the answer, and the built-in pop count uh, of the of the rem plus the built-in pop count of mask. So you can use built-in pop count for integers, and uh, this you need to use long long because rem can be a big number. And in this way, in this manner, um, we are considering the both the factorials. I mean, we are considering both the powers of two and the factorials to compute the final uh, minimum number of distinct values needed. So I hope you like this problem and solution. If you had any doubts regarding the factorials or uh, brute force or the built-in pop count uh, for the number of set bits in the remaining bit mask or do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you